These crazy shapes show up if we mess around with the Pythagorean theorem. a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It tells us the relationship between the sides of a triangle. If a is 3 and b is 4, then c must be 5. But if a is a hexagon and b is a spiral, then c is this weird shape. And we can change those input sides to get other cool results. But things get even more fun if we use the three-dimensional Pythagorean theorem, the relationship between sides of a pyramid. Now we can input three different shapes, and the results are mesmerizing. And at this point, you might be wondering... And I don't blame you. It's an interesting thing to wonder about. What does it mean for the length of a side to be a shape? What if we say that a is negative 1 and b is i? We can plug those values into the Pythag theorem, and we end up with c as 0. This may seem nonsensical. A triangle like this can't exist in the real world. But I'm not here to be sensible, I just want to look at trippy animations. So instead of negative 1, let's say this side length is a square, and we interpret that as a set of complex numbers. The complex numbers are two to mensch, so we can take all the numbers that form a square. And if we take the other side length to be the set that forms a circle, then we can put pairs of points through the Pythag procedure, and this process produces a rounded square. If we switch b to a hexagon, we get this for c. c is always a mix between the a and b shapes. So if we take both as a circle, we get a circle. And if both are squares, we get a square. And if both are triangles, we get a triangle and a negative triangle. When the shapes are the same, we can reduce the equation to end up with root 2 times the shape. But root 2 has two values, one positive and one negative. So we end up with two results. Going back to this example, we got 5 as the hypotenuse, but negative 5 is also a valid answer. The hypotenuse will always be some shape and it's negative. And in the complex numbers, turning negative is the same as rotating 180 degrees. That's 356 Fahrenheit for all the American viewers. And that's why we didn't notice this with the circle or square. They don't change when rotated. So this is the result for pentagons, and hexagons, and heptagons, and octagons. I'm bored. Let's go back to the triangles and make one of them rotate. Nice. And we could do the same with stars. But it's even better if one of the stars is backwards. Instead of taking points in the same direction, we go the opposite way for the second star. This idea can be a lot of fun. Here we use a spinning flower and a circle. But we could make it a backward circle, or a double backward circle, or a triple backward circle. Now, what if we make the circle bigger? The output tends towards a circle. And if we make the input circle smaller, the output tends to the spinning flower. When one input shape is bigger, it has much more influence on the output. So by varying the size, the output morphs between the two shapes. And here is another example The three-dimensional Pythag theorem describes the relationship between sides of a right pyramid meaning that these three angles are all 90 degrees, or 194 Fahrenheit. So if the sides are 1, 2, and 2, then the diagonal will be 3. Or if they're i, pi, and i, pi, the diagonal will be i. But let's say bi to the i and pi. They're making me want to use shapes instead. Let's use a flower, spiral, and star, and change their sizes at different speeds. Here the flower is largest, but then the star takes over, and then the spiral, and we repeat. But changing the size isn't the only transformation. We can also rotate, like with these wiggly spinning shapes. Or we can translate. The center of the square input is moving around. Let's move around the others. And of course, the best option is to use all three transformations at once one for each shape. Here's another example of that. 
and another. And you can find your own examples. I made this into a website. Thanks to my supporters on Coffee for helping to make this possible. You can switch around the settings to make different equations, and this even includes the quadratic equations from my previous video. If you don't know what to do, just roll the dice for a random setup, or click the hearts to see my favorites. And these aren't just my equations, but the viewers too, like this one from Steamed Egg Egg Egg. So if you find some cool settings, I want to see them. Copy the code and paste it in the comments section. I looked at every single one from the last video, and it was a lot of fun. And stay tuned. In an upcoming video, I'll be adding some new input shapes and more interesting equations to the site. And you don't want to miss out on that. Or maybe you do. I don't know. Sorry, I don't want to speak on your behalf. It's just kind of a common phrase, and I was trying to end the video with an exciting teaser. I didn't really think about what it meant.